Welcome back. It's time for part two of this cal. Um, we are working on our market bags and we have just completed four rounds of double crochet in every stitch. So we had 96 double crochet stitches all the way around. And now our bag has started to go vertical. It started to curve up. And so now we're going to work on the sides of our bag. So we're gonna change colors. I'm choosing to use the sugars and cream stripes and the color is country stripes. Not sure why it's called that. I don't think it looks like country, but someone did. So we're gonna go ahead with that. So what you're going to do is you are going to join in any one of the stitches that you want. Um, but we're first gonna make a slip, a slip knot. I always wanna say slip stitch, slip knot. And attach that to our hook. And then, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, just pick any one of your stitches and insert your hook. Wrap around and pull that through. Just a little slip stitch to anchor your yarn in place. Now this is actually kind of a fun round. Uh, we do a little something different just to give it a little bit of an accent. And I will show you what that is. We are gonna start by chaining three. One, two and three and we are going to count the stitch as a double crochet our next stitch we're going to work into is here but instead of working in the top of this stitch we are going to work in the top of the stitch below it so we're going to work down there okay so we're going to wrap our yarn just like any other double crochet and we're going to go down all the way to here insert our hook Pull up a loop and kind of be loose with it because you're using a little bit more yarn than usual. Pull through those two loops and pull through, whoops, try not to pull it right off the hook. <laughs> pull through those two loops. Our next stitch we're going to work into the top. Okay, so that's also going to be a double crochet. This entire round is double crochets, but this one's going to be into the top stitch. There we go. The next one is going to be just like the second one. We're going to work down into the bottom part. Of the next double crochet. And then once again into the top stitch. So every other one we're working into the stitch in the previous round, if that makes sense. And that's gonna give just a little bit of an accent to the color change. The really tricky part is just to make sure that you are going into the next stitch each time. Um, because you're not working into the top part of the stitch, it can be easy to get lost deciding which stitch to work into. So that is something that you just kinda wanna be careful of and at the end of the round, of course, you can count your stitches to make sure that you didn't miss any. Okay, so we're just gonna continue in the same way all the way around, and I think you'll like the effect. Okay, so here we are. We're back at the end of this round. Um, I have actually done 95 stitches, so I need to build in my 96th stitch here. And then I will join at the top of this chain. with a slip stitch, if I can get it to cooperate. There we go. Okay, so I really like how that looks in the variegated yarn, the changes so pretty, I just love it. 
So what we're going to do in the next round is very, very simple. We're going to chain up three. That first chain is going to count as our first double crochet, and we are gonna double crochet into the tops of every one of our stitches. So here's the first one. And the next. It's a little easier than the last round because it's just crocheting into the top of each stitch. Whoops. She says. <laughs> if you don't split your yarn. There we go. And I'm going to let you go ahead and continue to the end of the round and I'll meet you there and we will join up with a slip, a slip stitch when we get there together. Okay, we are back. We're at the end of our round. We've done 96 double crochets all the way around and now we are going to join at the top of our chain three with a slip stitch. Let's find the, the top of it there. One, two, three, it's up here. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, if I feel like that chain three is gonna to be too tight to get my needle through both legs, I cheat. <laughs> I just go through one of them. Nothing bad happens, the world doesn't end makes my life easier and my project does not seem to mind. So if you wanna to cheat too, you go right ahead. This isn't Monopoly, it's okay to cheat. <laughs> There's no yarn police gonna get you. Okay, so the next round we're gonna actually chain up four. So we've got one, two, three, four. And the reason we have four is because this top chain is going to count as part of our stitch pattern. The next stitch pattern, we are going to skip every stitch, okay? And the first, this stitch right here, we are going to skip that stitch and work into this one. All right, so we are going to do a double crochet into the second stitch. This is our first. So we're skipping this one and we're going right into that one. And that's what's going to create our mesh portion of the bag. Okay, so now we're going to chain one. And we're going to skip this one and go right into the next. Chain one, skip one, chain into, or uh, double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next. Well, it doesn't want to get in there, does it? Come on, you. Don't be stubborn. It is a stubborn stitch. There we go. Goodness. Chain one, skip one, work into the next stitch. Okay, I think you've got that. It's a pretty simple pattern to remember. You're gonna continue working that way all the way till you get to the end and we will chain up together. I'll see you there. Okay, so I have finished that round. Um, I've ended here with my double crochet and here's my chain four from the beginning. Now the first chains the first three chains, excuse me, are going to count as the double crochet. So I need to do a chain in between before I connect them. So there's my chain one, and then I need to count up to my third, one, two, three, which is up here. So we're gonna connect and join right there with a the slip stitch. And that completes my first mesh round. Now, the good news is that there's nothing else we need to learn for this part of the cal. For part two, everything has been learned. The bad news is, is we have to repeat this row about 19 more times. 
we need 20 rows of mesh. Or you can do this for as long as you want your bag. If you want your bag longer or shorter, you can stop wherever you want. Um, but for mine, I did 20 rows, or 20 rounds, excuse me, 20 rounds of mesh. So to continue, we're going to chain up three. And as always, that's our first double crochet. Then we're gonna chain one more for our chain one space. And we are gonna build directly into our double crochets from the previous round. So we're gonna go right into that stitch. Now it is a good idea to keep your tension kind of loose during this portion, during the mesh part, because um, it can be a little fiddly trying to wiggle into these stitches with the chains in between. So just keep that in mind. You might wanna just work a little loose during this portion. And that is something that I struggle with. I always seem to um, crochet a little bit too tight. My tension's always a little tight. So I chained one. Once again, we're going right into the top of our double crochet. Chain one, double crochet into the top of this double crochet. And this round is going to be exactly like the last one, okay? Chain one, skip one, whoops, double crochet. So go ahead and continue all the way around and I'll meet you at the end We'll bind or we'll um <laughs> we'll join those two together and from there on I'm gonna let you go on your own. All right, I'll see you at the end of the round. Okay, so here we are at the end of this round. All I need to do now is chain one and join at the third stitch in my previous chain. One, two, three. I'm gonna join up there. And that is it for that round. So chain up three to start your next round. And I think you understand how it all works. If you don't, always feel free to um, rewind and go back if you find yourself getting lost in the steps. Um, but yeah, other than that, you just need to continue making this mesh for about... Like I said, I, I'm doing 20 rows of it, so I've got 18 more to go, but you can make yours as long or as short as you want. And that is the end of part two of the Market Bag Cal. So I will see you again for part three.